Hey guys, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Sorry that I took a couple of weeks off, but it's vacation time here and we had to go out with the kids, so I wasn't able to pop out a video for the last two weeks. Uh, in the last video, I built my test bench and uh, I finally put it to good use. So what we're actually gonna do is uh, I'm gonna start a new series where we're really gonna look at all the budget coolers available on the market. And we're gonna go through them, you know, maybe one by one or a couple at a time. But I wanted to start it off with a little bit of a bang. So I started off with a comparison between six different coolers here. You see a seventh, which is the stock AMD, uh, the a stock AMD cooler, which I'll explain why it's there in a second. But basically, the point of the series is not is to basically build a, a chart so that we can know really when you're paying money for a budget cooler, what kind of performance you're going to get, what kind of noise you're going to get as well. Uh, and basically the reason why the AMD stock cooler, like I said, is there is this is our baseline. Because basically if you're not getting better than the old AMD crappy stock coolers, well, it's not even worth investing in any of these budget coolers at that point. So the point is, so basically this is going to be our baseline in the charts that we're going to look at a little bit later. And basically if they're doing worse than the stock cooler, well, you can ask yourself, is it worth the investment based on the price? If it's doing worse than the stock cooler, well, just don't waste your money unless you just want a visual upgrade. But sometimes you'll actually be paying for worse performance. And after looking at the results in these coolers, I think we'll be a little bit surprised what we got. Uh, now, like I said, this is just to get it started. So I went with the most budget coolers. So all the coolers have two things in common on this table. Number one, they all cost under 20 bucks and we're gonna go through the prices one by one. Uh, and number two is that they're all theoretically designed and marketed as low profile coolers. So if you're building an HTPC or if you're building it in a mini ITX case, these are supposed to be the choice of coolers you have for a budget case. And basically since the stock AMD coolers, the old ones are low profile to begin with, uh, you know, the, it's a good comparison because overall you can pop this in your HTPC and get some, you know, some performance out of it, even with the stock cooler. And by the way, for anyone of any of you out there wondering why I didn't take the Ryzen cooler, it's because these are all coolers also that fit AMD and Intel. And since Intel give you, you know, a sort of stock cooler, something like this, but you know, I think you all know what the Intel cooler looks like. I have one downstairs if you need to see it. But um, basically, I wanted it to compare to really what you're gonna, the worst you can get from one or, or, or the other of the companies in the stock coolers. Uh, so that's why I chose the old AMD stock cooler to do the comparisons on. By the way, I also took an FX 6300 chip. I took an old chip because I wanted a chip that produces a lot of heat. Okay, so all of this was tested on an FX 6300 and at 4.0 gigahertz with 1.35 volts. So it's a voltage that really pushes a lot of heat to the CPU uh, because basically if you're taking a good CPU that dissipates a lot of heat to begin with or that controls heat fairly well, well, you're not really going to get a difference between all the coolers. It's the same idea as why you test games at 1080p generally. It's because if you test it at 4K or you test it at higher resolutions, you're just not going to get a difference between the performance because you're limited by your graphics card. Well, it's the same thing here. If you're not testing a CPU that generates a lot of heat and that has trouble controlling its heat, well, you can pretty much sometimes pop any cooler on there and get about the same performance out of it because the CPU itself will sort of run at a baseline. So let's get started. Number one, we're just gonna go really quick through the coolers I chose, the prices I paid for them. Uh, we're gonna go with, this, with the basic market prices. Not, I won't tell you if I got any special deals or whatnot, because you can all hunt around for those. In this bracket of price, you can generally find up to like, you know, five to 10 bucks off from some of these coolers if you wait for them to really be on special. But we're gonna go with the regular prices. So first of all, on the cheapest one on that I could find from a reputable source was the Deep Cool Gamma, Ar uh, Gamma Archer, which was, is, it's basically sold here in Canada for 9.99 for so 10 bucks. It looks somewhat like the new AMD coolers, but you'll see in a few moments once we look at the charts, it's not necessarily the same performance you're gonna get out of it. Uh, after that, at $12.99 here, we have the Zalman CNPS 80, which is the old style of uh, coolers. However, don't 
mistake yourself, these aren't the cheaper ones you get for on eBay for five bucks. Since it's by Zalman, it still has some weight and some decent construction to it. Doesn't mean the performance is going to be there either. We're going to see that later. But uh, you know, it's it's still a cooler that's better than what you're going to get for five bucks on eBay. After that, we have the Deep Cool Ice Edge Mini. And basically this is the tallest cooler we have because it's a tower style cooler, but it's actually pretty short. And this one is $14.99 here in Canada, so 15 bucks. Uh, the reason I'm telling you it's really a short cooler, it's maybe not gonna fit in a hyper low profile PC, but basically this is shorter than my RX 460 on the test bench. So the RX 460 actually ends up being higher than this cooler. So any case that can fit a graphics card standing up uh, is gonna be able to fit this tower cooler as well. And they market it as a low profile tower cooler. And it is quite a bit shorter than most towers you're gonna find out there. After that, we have the Deepcool HTPC 200, which is 20 bucks, so 19.99. Uh, it's a hyper low profile cooler has a decent look to it. And by the way, these are the only two coolers that offer, uh, that offer four pin fans. All the other ones are, are three pin fans. So if your motherboard has voltage control, they'll be able to you know add, ramp up, ramp down. But if there's no voltage control, your fan will be spinning pretty much at 100% all the time. And last, we have the Ragen Tech Zelos, which is honestly the best looking cooler of the bunch. It's a three heat pump, uh, heat pipe design. And uh, basically it's another hyper low profile cooler. So, you know, it's gonna fit in pretty much any case you want. Uh, and once again, this one was 20 bucks, so 19.99. Uh, it seems to be on special here in Canada because Raging Tech is generally a little bit more expensive, but uh, regular price that I'm finding on the sites is 19.99. So it's pretty decent. And in the US, they might all be a few bucks cheaper as well, by the way. So now let's get to the interesting part. Let's get to the results. Number one, let's look at the heat. Now, uh, the chart should be up there in the corner. Uh, unfortunately, there are two coolers that completely failed the test. If you look, what I did is, you know, overclocked at 4.0 gigahertz. Uh, the stock cooler was able to keep the CPU with 1.35 volts at 63 degrees Celsius, okay? So that would be the first bar. That's like I said, our baseline. And with the same voltage and same uh, basic uh, free, you know, frequency and all that, unfortunately, both the HTPC 200 and the Raging Tick Zelos, they're not on the graph because even at idle, the CPU is going like above 70 degrees Celsius. So these coolers, they look good. They uh, might offer you really low profile designs, although I'll be honest, the stock cooler does not sit any higher or, or if it's higher, it's like a couple of millimeters. But unfortunately, for 20 bucks, the performance is not there. So actually the worst performance came from the two most expensive coolers. And the reason they won't be on the chart is just because I couldn't even complete the tests because once I put them on low, the CPU started throttling like instantly. So basically I have no uh, low temperatures to present to you. Uh, so honestly, unfortunately I have to tell you to begin with, these two for $20, keep your money. It's not even worth it. Uh, you're better off just sticking with an AMD stock cooler. Uh, the only thing I'll maybe say is that if you're looking for a visual upgrade, the Raging Tech we'll see in the next chart is extremely silent. It's the most silent of all the coolers I've ever tested at only 36 dBA for a budget cooler. So um, it's really a, a decent buy if you're looking for just a visual and a noise upgrade. Uh, after that, if we look, the only cooler that actually managed to outperform the stock cooler is the Ice Edge Mini, the, the tower cooler. And uh, I was actually surprised. I was expecting maybe the deep cool to do a little bit better than it did. But unfortunately, uh, the Ice Edge Mini will knock off about 8 or 9 degrees on your temperature with the tests we did. So you should be getting somewhere around like 5 to 10 percent better cooling. Obviously, depending on the CPU, depending on your, the frequency you're running, you won't be getting the end. Each CPU, even the same type, is different. So you won't be getting the exact same numbers, but you should be getting around the same difference in results. So meaning that you should be getting about 5 to 10 percent better than you're getting with the stock cooler. Uh, after that, unfortunately, like I said, 
Uh, to me, it's a fail on both the deep cool and the Zalman because both of them performed weaker than the stock cooler and by a decent amount. Like they're over 10% higher on the temperatures than the stock cooler. Uh, the only thing, once again, that the stock cooler, the stock cooler, like we'll see in the next graph, is actually the loudest of all the, the coolers. Uh, so you'll be, be getting better noise from any of the others. But both basically. Uh, if we look at delta temperatures, um, which the chart is in deltas, uh, we were getting basically 55 delta above, you know, a 55 delta on the Zalman and both a uh, 50 degree delta on the Gamma Archer, while we were getting only a uh, basically 39 delta on the stock cooler and a 31 delta on the deep cool. So out of all these coolers that we're looking at today, the actual only one that's maybe worth your money is the deep cool. Now I'll pop up the chart on the noise. If you look at the noise, honestly, they're all around the same noise, like within five decibels, except for the stock cooler where, where if you're spinning it at full load, it's above 60 decibels. It's where we're talking wind blower territory here. And at the other end, you have the raging tick Zelos. Oh my God, how do you say that? Zelos, I guess. And that one at full uh, speed is only giving you 36 decibels. So this one is whisper quiet. And honestly, if you're running an HTPC, not overclocked, and you really want it to be like whisper silent in your TV room because you're principally watching movies and all that, uh, that can be the only reason I would say invest the $20 in the Raging Tech Zelos. If not, you have the chart up there, like there's th four, th you know, like five basically decibels separating uh, the you know the quietest to the loudest of the other coolers so to me for five decibels honestly it's not noticeable m really on any of the coolers so honestly out of all of these the only one I would say that's a decent buy is the Ice Edge Mini if it can fit in the case that you're going with for the low profile coolers so like I said I hope you guys appreciated all these comparisons and I hope it helped you so that you don't waste money on any of these if you're looking at getting better performance. Just save your money if that's the point. Uh, unless, like I said, you're going for this one right here. Uh, and like I said, it's going to be an ongoing series. So I also, I already working on the next tests for the next batch of coolers. They won't be low profile coolers. We'll be looking at regular tower coolers now, but we'll start as well under 20 bucks for the tower coolers that are not here on the bench yet to know which ones are worth your money and not. So like normal, uh, leave a like if you like the video, leave a comment if you have any questions, if there's any coolers uh, like in the $30 or less range that you would really like to see that you're not seeing numbers on any other videos or websites, let me know if I can get it in the budget, if I can get the cooler, I'll throw it in and give you guys the numbers. Uh, and like I said, subscriptions are even like more, the more we get, the more I'll be able to do tests and stuff for you. So I hope you guys like it and I'll see you guys next time.